welcome to the first episode of Two Props, One Pod. Exciting. I'm so excited. It's so excited. with me and the fantastic, the chatty prop, Anya. Hi, everyone. So excited to be here. I am um, honestly, I'm so buzzing for this podcast. I mean, we chat enough rubbish when we're together anyway. So why not let the internet see that? So much. <laughs> can't wait for them to hear all my waffling. I can't wait for them to hear my theories. <laughs> I, love I love it. So much goss. So much tea. So, so, but I thought for those of them that haven't met us but like yes. before or haven't come across us before, we'll do a little introduction. Mm -hmm. So my name's Gemma. I run a TikTok and an Instagram called The Prop Life. I like to shout about women's rugby. Um, I'm a very bog standard prop from Devon and I'm just having a great day. <laughs> it's love it. We, we love it. it. We love it. And, and Anya. I don't know who am I? Well, I'm, um, my name's Anya, aka The Chatty Prop. Also do a bit of TikTok on the side, but again, another prop, hence the name. Uh, it's funny how we came up with that. Um, yeah, another prop, I play for Trojans in Southampton, um, and I'm also a chiropractor by trade, just still another little fact for you there. Um, and yeah, much the same, I think just an, I'm just an average person. I have actually forgot to say who I play for as well. Yeah, who do you play for? Because I think it makes it even more special, doesn't it, really? Yeah, it does. So, so fun fact, Anya and I are actually friendly opposition, so I play for Columpton in the same league as Trojans, Anya's team. Yes. So we are like the world's friendliest opposite front row. We rows. collide. We collide in the front row. That we're with friends. love. With love. We collide with love. That, that sounds really dodge. <laughs> <laughs> that's the cringiest. That's the cringiest intro I've ever done on the podcast. Two props, one pod. We collide with love. <laughs> I knew it was going to be nausy, but already it's it's right. up here. <laughs> what a day. Oh. So I thought. I thought it's quite a good way to like introduce us as well. Like it'd be yeah. a nice way to hear, and especially for younger viewers. Like, yeah. how did you get into rugby? Right. So, um, it's not. I think it's quite an interesting story. I don't know. Well, um, basically, I used to do judo back in the day, and I used to be used to that quite a good level. Got my black belt and everything. Um, and I just kind of loved doing a sport when I was at school, and obviously, like that kind of stopped, and I went to college. I was just a bit like, I've got no idea. I want to do something, but I don't know what I want to do, like to keep myself fit. And like, I wasn't very good at like netball or hockey or something like that. And I wanted something that was like a little bit like, like yeah, tough. Um, a little bit more intense. Yeah, a little bit like get my aggression out. So um, yeah, so women, the women's rugby team were hosting like trials, and I just went along, and I had absolutely no idea what I was doing I think I passed the ball forwards like four times um but no yeah I, and I just fell in love with it from there really and um started started playing then for like two years and then um I injured my hand when I was 18 and had to have like an operation um and I had to wear this awful like cast like six months um until I kind of just stopped playing for a bit and then um whilst I was at, whilst I was at uni I did um I like helped the local ladies rugby team out and the men's rugby team um at comedians in Bournemouth um if anyone's listening and yeah and then just kind of got back into the house is that. epic Oak yeah. house is insane it great, looks like a great a house. building it just so it's so random as well like in the middle of a park and then this like huge thing built onto the side it's great yeah great cover right. um and yeah so then just from there I kind of got back into it and then when I finished uni moved back to Southampton and here we are so great. yeah that was a long story um, probably not that interesting either. So tell me about yours instead, Gemma, please. Oh, no, it was a good story. So I started playing, um, I actually knew my first coach. I'd done a couple of bar shifts at the rugby club. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, just out of interest in rugby and, well, mild interest in rugby, more interested in rugby boys, unfortunately, at that time. Um, yeah. <laughs> but he oh, said, geez. yeah, uh, <laughs> but he said to me, come down and try it. And Every yeah. time he saw me for about six months, he was like, come down and try it. You love it. Yeah. And I was like, I'll come to one training session to humor you, to shut you up. Yeah. I will be terrible and we'll all laugh and go about our day. And then I went down and I wasn't terrible and I had a great time. Yeah. And I ran through people all day. And I finally found a sport where my natural physicality 
my yeah. natural way of going about life at 100 was not only accepted but a gift and the same with my build as well that was you know I'm tall and broad and yeah. as a teenager especially I was always taught that that was such a negative mm-hmm. then I turn up at rugby and it's it's one of the best gifts it's one it's a youth things. it's got a place yeah place so yeah I like that. I, yeah so then I started playing so I started down at Withicombe in Exmouth I moved away and played up at Windsor. Had a massive leg break yeah. at the end of my first season. Oh God! That, yeah. Oh yeah. Like a full on a bit bad, like bad. like an Abby Dow job. Yeah, and I was okay. like, oh, I'm never playing rugby again. I'm retiring. Uh, but I I couldn't really settle with that. I I didn't yeah. like I didn't like retiring not on my own terms. Yeah. So I was like, I'm going to come back to do one more match, and yeah. I came back to the seasons, and. Love that. Yeah. Here we are. And I'm pretty sure. Did you play did you play for Topsham once? Yeah, I did. So I yeah. feel, and I don't know if this is just me being me thinking, I think we played each other when I used to play for Oaks because Oaks used to be in Topsham's league. Yeah. I think back in the day, I was a lot more petite then and slightly fitter, but I'm pretty sure we did. I mean, that is very possible. Yeah, when I moved back to Devon, I went and played at Topsham. Um, it was just, you know, different yeah. place, different vibes. Yeah. And yeah, oh my god, it's such there a get it's small rugby. world. This was almost destined, Gemma, this this podcast. It's been it's the universe has had it in the makings for a long destined time. To host, yeah, destined to host each with each other. Oh um, so yeah. How so are thought, you? I'm yeah, we are good. And I thought we'd have a little look at like some some rugby news. Yeah, and that's our different. absolutely unwarranted opinions on all of the stuff that's yeah. happening. Bit. no one asked but we're going to give it to you so here we go the first bit i think is an absolute groundbreaker with scotland yeah great news fantastic news like great to hear that you know now we're starting to see just more full-time contracts okay yes only until the world cup but i think the girls will keep smashing it keep proving it and i think it will only and then going on further from that so it's great great news only each time it happens it puts more pressure on the teams that are not providing those contracts yeah and you know Rachel Malcolm and that whole Scottish team they didn't win the Six Nations but they put their absolute heart body and soul yeah. to the line and such they great girls with such, such good. professionalism and it's it's everything they've deserved it really really yeah. is I'm so happy for them I just think I just think you know to be working full-time jobs and to be trying to play and to recover and to be eating properly and it's like it's it's so it's so, it's so much of a demand just like not on the body physically but you know like mentally I don't know I, like yeah, sometimes, yeah. I can, sometimes I just struggle with work you know so like I've got yeah. no idea like how, they, how they're doing it and you know we saw we saw part way through the TikTok Six Nations that you know Italy got their Italy got contracts didn't they um uh, and a couple of others since then so you know it's, it's only a great thing and then it just it just it's just going to make this like these competitions more and more competitive and everyone's gonna be yeah. gonna say you're never playing field and it's just good it's just good for the game it's nothing but good for the game you know I always compare it like you know England set up England versus other teams that are not contracted and not having yeah. that same unfortunately you can really see the difference at the moment yeah. but and that's not that to say that other teams are of a lesser standard it's just yeah. that that England level is so elite because it's being yeah. treated more in a more elite way and I mean, ironic, yeah. it's ironic in rugby, of all things, that we're having to often explain an even playing field because everyone understands the concept yeah. of a playing field. You know, we've all played teams where we've been absolutely steamrolled. We've all been oh. in circumstances where the rugby pitch isn't even. Yeah. So. It's, yeah, you know, like exactly what you said. Like we've all been in circumstances where club, one club's had 10 times more funding than another club. And it's evident, it's evident on, you know, like it's evident on the pitch. Just those, like, just those simple things that, that going full time, you know, can provide just takes a huge stress off those players. Like it, it means they can focus all their effort onto it. And like you say, England have been quite fortunate to have a good setup for a substantial amount of time more than some other countries. So it'll be nice to see like what the, what happens and how this progresses. And um, you know, like we see how amazingly these girls perform with no contracts, and now look how amazing they're going to be with them. So you know, yeah. it'll be really interesting to see where the game progresses, especially with the World coming up, World Cup coming up. Um, and the Six Nations next year. Can't wait. I'm not I even subtle about the fact that I want to go out to New Zealand to cover the World Cup at I this don't. point. 
I, 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 I do. I just, I try just quit my job. And I might just move to New Zealand. Should we do it? To, we just yeah. quit. Why Take not? two props, one pod on tour. It's like, yeah, we've done one whole episode. <laughs> two props, one pod on tour. Gemma, don't start ideas. Don't start ideas now. It's it's the pod tour that the country really needs, you know? It's the pod tour that no one asked for, but everyone wants. So I'm I'm down. I'm um, invested. I'm invested. I'm invested already. I'll back it. I'll put my money in. We're going. Alan Sugar, I'm in. <laughs> yeah, that's it. We'll just talk to Murray. We'll get it sorted. I'm sure we can put on. Yeah, 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 fine. Yeah, no he should have known when he signed us two up that we would somehow go absolutely rogue at some point and like it's part us. of our sparkle, you know. It's he's just gonna lose us for like a couple of months. We're just gonna go go we could just tour England. God, New Zealand ideas. Camper van, World Cup, two props, Pod, one van. Podcast. Brilliant. I'm in. I mean, don't you don't have to you don't have to ask me twice. I'm already there. <laughs> Sorry, should we get back to what we should should be talking about? Oh, um, <laughs> should we actually get back to what we're supposed to be? <laughs> yeah, so you were telling me about, um, as well earlier, the Allianz Premier 15, because yes. we've had news on that today. So it's been, um, yes, they just released today, um, the Premier 15's um, uh, 2023 schedule and like kind of how it's going to be run. It's really interesting. We're seeing a bit of a change of structure this year, um, you know, the year just gone by and everyone plays each other twice and then we had the semi-finals finals um this year it's been split into two pools so it's pool a and pool b and both the kind of five teams in it don't quote me on what those teams are in each pool because i have forgotten but um split into two pools um, equally i think um it's a round robin of those pools um with each team getting a, like a bye match and so there'll be 18 matches in total i believe and then i know that sounds quite Quite extreme and then semi-finals and finals and that's due to start i believe like the 19th 20th of november correct me if i'm wrong 20 okay. and finishing um with the finals i think finals on the 24th of june 2023 so it's going to be a good season i think and i think this year just like every year's got closer and closer uh, you know you, like this this year you couldn't have predicted who was going to be in the top four so there's several was, i think there's several takeaways from like from this update the prem 15s yeah i mean Firstly, as we were saying, like, that is a lot of games. You know, we play Champs too, and that is a much. high number of games, but that is not that much. And if you think about it, there's going to be some girls that have been performing out in the World Cup. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hence, another really good point is, is the delay to the season. Yeah. But you've got some of these girls who are coming straight from heavy international duties to them potentially. And I know that they'll have resting periods and, you know, they manage it really well. But that is still a heavy, heavy season. Yeah, so it's it's a lot of matches. Um, I'm, I mean, I struggle with our league, Gemma. So I don't know how they're going to be doing it. But I'm not an athlete, so. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not an athlete, so there we go. Um, yeah, no, and it's it'll be really interesting to see. Um, because I know there was some bit of other teams trying to create Prem 15s teams. Um. I don't know whether they're doing things where they're only going to open it up every certain amount of years. It would just be really interesting. Um, I think now we're seeing like obviously more internationals coming across the plane in the Premier 15s. Um, and the competition for spaces is just so much more uh, yeah. intense. So it's just gonna be it's just gonna be really interesting. Have you seen some of the big moves quickly? Lots some of the big moves bears. in the league. Lot like, of Gloucester, Gloucester Hartbury signing Alex Matthews, Maud Moore, and um Sue Lillycrap. I know I was I've I've lost my That's mind at some of these some of these signings. But like Did my friend, Mercer, my friend, Mr. Mercer just signed someone else. Well, they've just signed um Lark Davies. Yeah, that was who I was on about. Yeah, yeah, and mind blown. And that front row now, right, as a prop. So you've Simi got Pan, Sarah Byrne and Lark Davies. Yeah, with holy, like, holy sugar, honey, iced tea. That's what I say. I literally lost my mind. You've got a prop that can sprint. On either side, on the wing, with the yeah. hooker with the leg drive that she's got, like that is insane. Bristol yeah. have done the; they have played smarter, not harder with their. Lark Davies is going to add some absolute, just yeah, world smashing power to that squad. I don't know, like she, she just so and she performs so well for the Red Roses. I, you know. Like she's an absolute, like she's just a reliable, hardworking player, great person to add. add and to a the human as well. 
Yeah. Oh, lovely human. And then, like, you obviously have Alex Matthews, another huge shining for Gloucester Hartbury into that yeah. um, back row, along with um, Maud, who is um, who has been at Wasps, I believe, for the last four years. It's been yeah. incredible to see how far she's come on um, and developed. And she's she's going to be an incredible, you know, an incredible player. And then the experience of Siren in the in the back row. So we're really Maud, just Maud's move is really exciting for me because she's you know yeah. she's come on so far in a very short space of time yeah. but also she's still quite young she's so and, young so and young like a lot of and that Gloucester Hartbury setup was obviously set up you know from the mm-hmm. college originally and there's still a lot of kind of um some great kind of uh yeah. facilities and things for young players mm-hmm. so I'm really excited to see that kind of development pathway um take her to that next yeah. level she is so she's so exciting as a player she's, got, she's she's like one of those players to watch for the future like I think her like you know Sadia Kabea I think is she's great she plays for love, love for lightning I think you know yeah. like, um, Lu- like Lucy Packer uh, I think we've got some great you know great talent that is being produced from English grassroots rugby you know coming through and it's really important though that we try to develop that um, and yeah, you know, like, keep bringing those girls keep like keep bringing those girls um through but if that's just the start of like the signing period like just imagine what's going to happen in this like I think there will be some I don't know but I'm I feel like there's going to be some more big kind of big changes big moves and then it's like how you know someone's going to fill those spaces on the other team so it's yeah. going to be really interesting to see who's moving where what's happening exciting honestly it it's it's so exciting and I get I get a little like whoop every time that the, I see a new signing thing come through. Um, yeah. it, it's just really fascinating and it's really interesting. Um, it, it's, I, I don't know how to describe it, but some clubs have a very much a different personality. Mm. And so like, I think Lark personality wise would be a great fit for theirs, or I yeah. hope that her anyway. And that was I why I was that. really, really excited to see that move. I think, yeah, more nice personality fit for Gloucester. And you know what I've met her, she's so lovely. She's like the loveliest, loveliest girl. So like, I think this is a great, and she's playing alongside, you know, like the likes of like, so we crossed there, Mo Hunt, you know, like it's just, yeah. What a place to be. Gloucester Harvey looks like it is making a statement very early on of what it is going to be doing, this, what they're going to be doing this season. And I mean, Zoe Oldcroft, we, you know, we are big Zoe fans here. You know, we've got to hang out got with her. A of videos of dancing with her. I didn't smash the dances, but... I, I that. violently failed at the dances. No, but I no, Jimmy, you did better than me. I've seen them. I've, I've watched. I, you, I, was, I was counting the whole time. I was, I was, you could almost see me, like... One, two. <laughs> well, Amy's just there making it look so easy. So cool, yeah. you know. Anyway. I was just like, this is not optimal for me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure what's really interesting, but like just going back to the Premier 15s, is like I was gutted I couldn't get the final because I was at all the sevens, um, not doing particularly well in my sevens playing career. But what's really good is they streamed it. They had the they had the on, on big screens um, uh, in the beer tent. So like it was really good to it was really good to to watch. Um, so a couple of us kind of tried to watch some of that. Um, so yeah, I was. Great. Um, um, on the pitch <laughs> yeah you know some of us got the call up to be on the pitch I was like there's Jenna, there's Jenna. There's Jenna. in fairness um, I, I'm not sure how much I was actually meant to be on the pitch compared to the amount that I was actually on the pitch but I was like ask for forgiveness yeah. I remember them saying to me you don't have to go on the pitch too much at the England Island game and I was like oh, you best believe I'm going to be on that pitch you'll probably come to drag me off it I was like I'll be on there till you can catch me yeah, I'm gonna run. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like the, I'm like the worst form of pitch invader because I actually have a lanyard. So, <laughs> back in. Yeah, like, I just can't, I'm I just can't move very fast. I just can't move very fast, so they catch me in two seconds. But yeah, um, very jealous. Also, I, so I just had a thought as well on the two props one pod grand tour, Clydesdale sevens. Yeah, so I've heard good things about this. It is. I've never so, been. I've never like been. Five. Like so, like I can't. We've done. We've done Bournemouth. We've done Southampton Sevens. We've got Worthing Sevens this weekend, which is that's a good laugh. If you want a good laugh, Worthing Sevens is good, and North Dorset Sevens. That's a laugh. That, that's like social, social fun times. You know, not yeah. not very serious. That's I'm my kind of Sevens. That's my kind of yeah. Sevens. I do not do competitive Sevens. I. Yeah. 
I'm not about me. that life. I think I can't remember. I remember some, someone's being someone's desperate to play as Form Sevens, and they asked me, and I was like, "No, you don't need me on your team. <laughs> I am more of a hindrance than I am a help, and that is a fact." So don't no. ask me. you're mean um, on yourself. You was honestly, I when you ran at me a little while ago, I was like, "Girl, she got momentum." Oh yeah, no, that's just cause, that's just because I'm big and I can't stop. Like once I've started running, I need I need like a good ten meters to slow down. Like I will just face bun into you if not like you know i'm like that i need three to five working days if i'm stopping when i'm running yeah if someone steps me the other day someone stepped me and i had forward roll stop there's a video of it i might put that on my instagram later <laughs> please put that on tiktok we ended up playing ourselves we were playing this tournament and we ended up playing ourselves because like both chosen teams got through and um and yeah one of my teammates just stepped me and i just rolled <laughs> that is incredible i absolutely love that that is we'll put that up somewhere oh please do I, I honestly i want the footage of that that is incredible sure yeah but, but yeah so, so clydesdale sevens for anyone that hasn't yeah. heard of clydesdale before it's so you have five out of your seven players have yeah. to be forwards hmm. is this the one in america actually that you were on about yeah yeah i don't know why i thought it was up north on me but it's in america it is it is in america yes I'm, you see i like that those odds i feel like i'd feel more at home there yeah, me too. I would. I relate to that tournament spiritually, you know. Do you know what? There was a point. There was a point on a Saturday at Bourne Sevens when we were playing. We, like, shout out, we won the plate in the social. I'm quite proud of us. Quite proud. Um, there was a point where our friend Lou Burgess, she she helped she helped us play. You probably met Lou. You probably played against her. Um, and um, we were all. And I kid you not, our first match wasn't until two ten. So we all walked up for the first match. On a scale of like one to drunk. <laughs> you know, like all turned up for like cocktails in the hand. We went to the cocktail and before. And yeah. I put my Lou went, girls, we actually do need to warm up now because you'll put your drinks down. And <laughs> I, was like, I was like, no, no. And I swear I played better on Saturday because I just had no fear. No thoughts. Yeah, no thoughts, just booze. It, honestly, yeah. it's, it's the best way to go. Like, so I go to Fat Bloke Sevens. Have you been there before? That's at Reading Abbey, isn't it? So me yeah, and my mate, be good. Every, every year we just pack up my car and I've got like a big old Citroen, right? Yeah. It, when you put the seats out, it's basically a van. We yeah. load that with alcohol, with ourselves, with a tent that smells like ethanol. And like, we just go off to Reading and have the most hilarious weekend. But I've heard good things. I've heard good things. I almost needed to be put on an IV last time because I drank I drank alcohol instead of water for three days, and I was so dehydrated. I was, honestly, yeah. Every year I tell myself I can't do it anymore, and every <laughs> year I thrive. Um, but yes, Gemma, we've gone so off topic. We've gone so wildly off topic. So the last thing we were going to say about to introduce kind of the pod and what we're going to yeah, be chatting yeah, yeah. about was New Zealand, wasn't it? Yes, we were going to chat about New Zealand. It's flying up there. I mean, as uh, according to ourselves earlier, we're going to be there in a van. Um, yeah, we've all, yeah, apparently we've just made that. Yeah, apparently we're going. So that's great. I'll, I'll commit to that. Um, New Zealand, so it's up. who are you, which team are you excited to see this world? I knew you were going to say this because I was literally just going to ask you the same question. Um, well, I mean, obviously the Red Roses, but I think I need to go a bit outside the box. Um, you know, I think contenders, if I'm going to talk about, I think contenders to win. Yeah. I think obviously England are up there. France, I think are going to not just let us run away with that. Um, yeah. Quite interestingly, in like the Pacific. Yeah. Oh, I can't, well, I can't remember the name. Just the big island. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah. Um, but like New Zealand just looked really... Um, they looked really strong. Do you know um, who I'm excited to see? USA. One, yeah, I, I don't know if you guess it or not. Yeah, you were saying Canada, I think, or you can't. can't I mean, Malika Menin, who's one of the Canada props that plays at Aster, she's so powerful and yeah. such a runner. But then you've got like, um, you've got Hope Rogers, who also plays at Exeter. She, she has had an insane yeah. season. 15. She's dotting, again, dotting down tries like it's, like it's yeah. nobody's business. And then you've got people like Kate Zachary, who 
I think she's the only person in the Prem 15s who is going between the forwards and the backs because she's perfectly capable of both. Yeah. I think, you know, like uh, somebody played in the Prem 15s last season, but not this, like Sophie Deguda. She plays for Canada. She's insane. Um, I just think, and it's great to see people coming over here, I think, um, and playing in our league and just like bringing a bit of spice. Um, yeah, no, I'm very excited. I think, I think any of those kind of like um, any of those teams, America, Canada, France, New Zealand, England. I think it'd be exciting to watch. You know, you can't rule out Australia too. Um, but literally, I think the best thing. I think the best thing about rugby is it can be anyone's match on the day. Yeah. Anyone. So you know, I don't think you can rule out Scotland, Ireland. You know. Yeah. Wales. And I'm excited Italy. to see. Obviously, Wales come in. You know, we could see already with Wales how much yeah. of a difference those contracts are making in their performance. Yeah. You know. I really did try to manage expectations ahead of the Six Nations and be like, hey, you know, they've had those yeah. contracts in it for a very short amount of time, yeah. but they are already showing those improvements. So yeah. I'm very excited to see teams like Wales. And I'm also just excited to see the teams that come out the woodwork that you would never yeah, have thought never of. Expect. Expect. I'm also hoping to see a much happier New Zealand squad after the cultural kind Absolutely. of... Absolutely. That's quite a good link there. I think that's what I... Wanted. you could tell I think I think you could tell from like the last set of you know like internationals and those matches and you could tell like New Zealand weren't the New Zealand that I think we all had known um, yeah we, we know that New Zealand are physical and they're, and they're fantastic they've got you know you know great rugby skills and you could just see that passion maybe yeah. be all that just that love the sport wasn't wasn't necessarily there um so all these big I kind love, of I love like New Zealand rugby because yeah as you say they they also play with such intense pride yeah not just, love it yeah not just pride for New Zealand but pride to be playing rugby yeah and joy and that you know I saw it at Exeter so they just it that pride wasn't there yeah. and well not that pride wasn't there that joy wasn't there mm. and it wasn't it wasn't like the fieriness that you used to yeah. used to seeing um just for the people who don't know do you want to kind of just go into detail a bit more about what happened well not not lots of detail but just kind of yeah. describe what happened so one of the um new zealand women um basically she did an incredibly brave thing and yeah. she called out uh new zealand rugby for some real cultural issues um in the setup in the coaching in the way that the players are cared for um there was major major issues within the way that players felt alienated yeah. they felt picked on and bullied at times um i'm not please i'm not directly quoting but i'm quoting you know yeah. um loosely there was just a lot of cultural issues um yeah. issues with players that are maori and players that are not yeah. um and again differential treatment yeah. so there was a massive inquest into this and New Zealand rugby was found accountable to be basically failing its players yeah. um, particularly the female players and they are now implementing changes and um, I know some diversity measures mm. and some things just to basically move forward in a more positive way yeah and you can see that, you can see that in their performances recently um, in some of the test matches they've played, um, where they've just come back out of their, come back out of their shell, as um, as you say, you know, um, which is, yeah, it's, it's really good. It needs to be done. I think you can, you can go and read, and I can't remember um, the lady's name, but you can go and read everything that happened. It is a long read, but it is a very important, important one at that. Yeah. Um, because rugby is all about family and it's all about where you should feel comfortable. And I think there was a lot of, a lot of, of things that were happening that made people not not want to play for their national country which is which is sad isn't it so um so yeah so so yeah that's really sad and I'm really glad they've um kind of brought yeah. in some of those measures and you can definitely see a bit more of that yeah that New Zealand spark coming back and that spirit coming back. back yeah I mean I, I, I love them I love to watch them great great rugby you know like it's it's always always a pleasure to watch the black fans or the all blacks or anything. one of the things on my like rugby bucket list is to go and play some games out in like new zealand or yeah, in i love that the big islands because don't get me wrong i would be like those girls are so powerful i would be absolutely decimated but it would be incredible rugby yeah. and it would be an incredible 
as I said, the, the, just the culture around rugby, when it's good out there, it's so good. Mm. And it takes the rugby spirit and everything that we value in particular at grassroots level. And it just, it's just yeah. next level up. I think it also like comes back to, and I like, you know, we're talking about New Zealand and how they're unhappy and a bit like, a bit like with the island, island women and, you know, like them complaining about like just the poorest conditions they were, you, you know, yeah. and the lack of support they had from, from their governing body. And, and like, I, like to be fair to the, to be fair to ladies, I don't think I, 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 few have done as much as really New Zealand. Yeah, have in terms of the changes, they, uh, it's, it, you know, it's, it's upsetting that it's still, still we feel like, um, you know, the, the lesser of the two. Yeah. Sections. it shouldn't happen. Like, and I, I actually didn't really think that the rugby world cup in New Zealand is going to be, for ladies, like a fantastic experience. I think it's going to be. And I hope it really cements that kind of spotlight on New Zealand rugby to make those changes, to implement yeah. changes and to and to kind of, you know, you said you're going to do this. Let's I'll do, do it. it. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, I think that is the grand. Maybe we'll go. Maybe we'll be there. Who knows? OK, well, Possibly. to finish off, let's have a bit of fun. So yeah. you made an incredible video when we went to the Six Nations Media Day um and it was one of my favorite videos to come out of the six nations just it just made me chuckle and it made me really laugh yeah, so you. Well, you said about rugby x but i want to hear about your specific front row x god so oh, oh, oh. i have one. that's difficult you go first and i'm gonna okay so my front row ick is when someone bores into your neck yeah. So that is front row ick. Underneath your chest, give it underneath your chest. Like, like this, yeah, like yeah. fully in, yeah. into the neck. Because there's, it's just like, there's no need. There's no need. Absolutely. Just, like, play by the rules. Although, just run better. Just, just I don't think I do. run me over. Just run me over rather than. Yeah. You know, um, it's just... Front row icks. Do you know what it is? When the second rows go to bind. And they grab more. Yeah, yeah. Cries in front row. We yeah. all know. We all know. Like, not to give too much away. I was in the scrum once. It's our pod. We can. I was in the scrum once, and someone went to grab. Well, actually, that no, she's a great second row. My friend Claire Brown, fantastic second row. If you ever need one, um, and she went to grab my shorts, but she also grabbed my undershorts and my pants, which meant like the second row in front of me and prop probably got more than more for that squad than they were expecting um having played yeah. against you i can i can vouch for the fact that your shorts are they're beyond incredibly short they're at the point of violently short it's not do you know what it is oh don't because like me and my friend shards who have exactly the same issue in this department um got nothing to do with how the shorts fit i could get we could get the biggest sizes and we have got the biggest sizes before yeah i don't know whatever brand trojans are using i'm not sure i can't quote but like they, you can't, you just can't keep them in town. If you've got big thighs, which me and Charles, you can't be able to see right now. I have, th- I have huge thighs, not necessarily in a muscly way. No, she is, she is quads. Our girl is quads. I'm quaddy. Um, and um, yeah, you just can't keep them down. So basically, if you ever play me or you have played against me or you've seen me play, I literally look like I'm running around the um, field and pants. It's, it's incredible it's truly a sight no to it's see. not and it's not it's not big and it's not clever and <laughs> like i'm like but it's i'm done with it do you know what i mean it's like there's just no shorts that stay down like so yeah. it's it's something to, i've got to somehow cut away half my leg weight and then i think fine. what we'll have to do is do an episode on as well a few of the things that we recommend for women in rugby because i've yeah. got the knack with a few products now that i would totally really recommend yeah. but i've got one more front row ick yeah when the opposite front row is too competitive. Like I, as you know, I'll go into a scrum yeah. and be like, morning. And if yeah. someone else is just there like eh, in my face, I no, just I'm just like, what are you doing? So Do you know what also gets me? I don't like it when people like whisper things in my ear. They're like, why are you doing that? It's creepy. And yeah. Like, and you're like, let's not. Or yeah. like when they're like, she's, sir, she's doing this. Sir, she, I'm like, yeah. 
chill out, chill yeah. out, whoa, no need. And no, I I'll, I'll, I'll call off. out if I think it's a danger issue, but I, yeah. other than that, it's like, and like, just like, like sir, sir, she's doing this with her arm. I'm like, I'm meant to be doing that with my arm. I don't know what you want me to do. That's how a scrum works. Like, and my my hooker who was um who was a captain Vicky, which is like, shut up. Like, like, stop, Annie, stop, we're gonna get us in trouble. But I'm like, sir. I, I choose to kill it with patronizing now. So yeah. we had someone who kept binding onto my sleeve um at, at one of she she kept binding onto my sleeve. Name, name, what club? She grabbed name a bit of my bingo wing at one point. It was really upsetting. Name and show what club what club was this? We're not going to. <laughs> Sorry, no. We won't carry on. Sorry. Don't, don't worry. One well, should know better. Um <laughs> and anyway, she kept binding onto my sli- sleeves. So I was just like, it's all right, mate. You just need to bind onto my shirt. We can reset as many times as you need. Anyway, needless to say, should have probably got punched in the face. Yeah. But I just think there's no need. I'm like, I am like the least, I'm actually going to make a TikTok about this later. I am like the least, I don't think I'm very aggy. I don't think I am. Like, it takes no, quite not. a lot to, it takes quite a lot to roll me. Yeah. So like someone quite- like, I tackled someone once and they were like, oh, get off me, you fat bitch. And I was like, so unnecessary. I was like, so unnecessary. Like, okay, I'm sorry I tackled you, but it's the name of the game. Like, yeah. what do you want me to do? Just let you. I was like, I was like, oh, right, yeah, I could be slimmer. Thank you for acknowledging that. But no need. I um, fairness, I did, I did leave out of my, hi- my highlights video, um, the video of me get, almost getting punched in the face from last season. Who did you get almost punched in the face by? It was Artie. No. Oh, I'll send it, I'll send it to you later it's funny Please, I was like, but, that doesn't sound like a trojan thing to do no yeah it's not a trojan vibe but no I, I did keep that out of my highlights compilation but it is quite funny um with hindsight it wasn't at the time at the time I was just like breath I'm trying to th- I'm trying to think of like things up no I've only yeah I haven't I've been eyed I've been poked in the eye a couple of times I, I also don't like people like again so I'm all up for a little bit of like silly chat or something yeah and God knows I give enough stupid chat when I go into scrums, but if yeah. someone tries to stick my face or kiss me, I'm like, mm, no. That's not nothing. Me. Yeah. Kissing, like, that's nothing that people do in scrums sometimes. They give you a little peck on, on the cheek or you're like, on the rock and I give you a little peck and you're like, can you go away? Like, I don't I actually... Don't, I don't I know where that really, I actually find it's really inappropriate. I'm like, I don't, I don't want that. No, it, it's... it's mm, no. Let's keep that away from me. Away. Um, it's only, uh, to be fair, it's only happened to me a couple of times, but on the times it's happened, I'm like, yeah, oh. <laughs> get out here. Get out of here. I'm like, no, thank you. Um, that's I think funny, that's my icks. Uh, there's so many icks I have. That was a really good video, actually. And I'm going to, before I get to go, because I'm going to Commonwealth Games, I'm not going with anyone. I'm going with my dad, actually. Not, not nice. Anything. Um, but if I'm there, everyone, say hi if you see me. Um, I'm going to just go around and ask people what the biggest fuck weeks are. You should do it. Oh, why not? Or goose step. Did you see my goose step on ball carrier? I did. I the, rugby mean, guy, the rugby guy <laughs> rated it a generous six, and I'm quite proud of that. Oh, yeah, no, that's, that's considerably better than mine that was, like, somewhere in the minus numbers. In fairness, I did my video knowing yeah. I can't goosey. I just did it for the... Well, I, don't, I can't goosey. It's you know chicks. what I mean? I was terrible at it, but I was quite proud of that. So yeah. Anyway, that's that's that. You did great. I was proud of you, and I loved your screensaver that was a picture of yourself. It was just myself, and it is, and it still is. And um, I was just like very on brand. Um, <laughs> so it's like I can't actually even show you now, um, because it's got messages on. But like, um, you see, yeah, it's just me, it's just me. In oh, yeah. love it. Why not? You know. She asked me that. I knew exactly what that question was coming, and I was like, oh, I'm going to have to say it's me. I'm just going to have to own it. You did it with such chest, though. Like, you were like, yeah, it's me. It's me. Fine. And, um, yeah. I can't remember whatever questions they asked, but, um... Look, oh, yeah. Here's my rugby crush. That was it. Anyway, I'm sorry. I'm chatting a load of rubbish now. Um, what yes. this podcast is for. <laughs> that is what this podcast is for. So, I feel like next time, for anyone who's interested, we will probably have a guest, won't we? We should have a guest. We're working We're on it. We're going to try and get some guests um, using our extensive contact list. Um, we'll find someone. Yeah, that's fine. Um, no, we are. We're going to have some guests um, and we'll probably talk a bit more about the Rugby World Cup. I am very excited about it. But we should probably talk a bit more about the structure of that, actually. 
Um, yeah. Which I actually don't know because I need to look into that myself. I will be able to go over the rest of the signings for the Prem 15. Signing for the Prem, Prem 15. Maybe we'll go over some predictions and things like that about who we'd like to see. Yeah. Um, so if anyone's watching this, Man. comment below who you'd like to see on our little podcast. We are going to try and shove women's rugby in the face. Yeah. Preferably violently. Anyone who plays women's rugby, who is a journalist of women's rugby, who loves women's rugby, that's what we're here for. Yeah. And let us know as well, if you're a front row, what's your front row ick? Yeah. Let us know. I thought there's a couple out there. There's a couple. Um, yeah. It's gonna be, there's going to be so many. Um, yeah. Well, it's been great, Gemma. It's been great. Thank you so much, Anya. And well, we will see welcome. you guys again very, very soon. Yeah. Bye. Three.